may be. We began uh, uh, the service this evening, Reverend exhorted a little bit out of Acts chapter 2, and he began to talk about the Holy Ghost that was given there. And you know, it is really probably the main thing that is lacking in the Christian world. Yes. If a person is really saved, brother, sister, they are a candidate for the baptism in, with, and of, of the, Holy the Holy Ghost. Ghost. Amen? Amen. Amen? God has, uh, just like he told the disciples that we read of in the Bible, he said he's been with you. You read it there in chapter 14, but he's going to be in you. Yeah. We may have experienced a portion of the Spirit of God when we got saved, but God wants us to have the Holy Ghost without measure, just like Amen. Jesus Amen. received. If Jesus needed to be baptized with the Holy Ghost, and he is the sinless Son of God, how much more you and I, brother and sister, and thank God we can receive all that God has for each and every one of us. Let's go to the book of Acts. Okay, we're talking about nor depth, nor height. Brother, sister, nothing's able to separate us from the love of God. All of these things that we can read up there in the book of Romans, chapter 8, you and I have been made more than a conqueror through him that loved us. Amen? Amen. So how does God cause us to be a conqueror? And we know, first of all, that Jesus saves us. Yeah. He washes away our sin. He changes us, and we become a new creature in Christ. All things pass away, and behold, all things become new. Amen? Amen? Yeah. God makes things new in our life. We start all over. We start fresh with God. We're no longer away from God. We're no longer strangers to God. We're no longer enemies of God. We're not alienated from God, but we are part of the family of God. We're part of the, the body of Christ, and we are... Uh, able to receive everything that God has for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. A lot of times I think people look upon themselves and they don't see uh, what God has done. You know, they're living their life and, and there's room to grow as there is with each and every one of us. We can all grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. Amen. There are things that they have to overcome in life. So they look at these obstacles. They look at maybe uh, shortcomings in their life and they think, well, you know, uh, maybe that's not for me. I'm not victorious. I'm not. I'm not uh, 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 receiving the promises of God, my friend. If you are saved, you are victorious in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And all the promises are to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, they are for you. They for each and every one of us. And and one of the promises that people need to know about, people need to receive, of course, is the baptism in with and of the Holy Ghost. Let's go to Acts chapter one. And we began reading in verse 4. And being assembled together with them, Jesus was there assembled together with them. And he commanded that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Now we're learning about what he said about it in chapter 14. We we'll see more in 15 and 16. We can also drop back to chapter 7 of the Gospel of John. And that's what Jesus is referring to, along with other things that are said. John the Baptist spoke of the Holy Ghost. He said, I baptize you with water. There comes one after me whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost yeah, and with fire. fire. Okay? Fire. So it's been taught. It's been talked about, brother and sister. God has made it known. Okay, We can even go back to the book of Joel, chapter 2, and we can read there how that God would pour out his spirit in the last days, and his sons and his daughters would prophesy. Amen. Amen? Amen? So we have all of this scripture. Jesus was referring the fact that he had told them about it there in different parts of the, of the Gospels. John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So we know he's not talking about water baptism. John had already baptized in water. He's talking about a baptism of of the Spirit of Almighty God. Yes. Amen. Okay? Do you remember when you got baptized in water? Yes. Okay. Now, when I was a little baby, they baptized me. I didn't know what was going on. It wasn't really a baptism. It was a sprinkling. Okay. Because I was brought up in another uh, denomination in Catholicism, and they didn't. That's not a baptism. They sprinkled me with water. Oh. And uh, brother, sister, thank God. One day I got saved, and I read in the Bible that we should be baptized. And I got baptized. I got submerged in water. 
They didn't just sprinkle it on my head. I was a grown adult. I knew the decision that I had made, okay? And I wanted the people to know that I was a Christian now. And so I went through that outward ordinance of, that shows what happened on the inside. I was dunked in that water, submerged, and I came up, brother and sister, a new creature in Christ. Not the water baptism didn't do that, but that showed what me coming to Jesus did. Well, God wants me to continue, brother and sister, to be... Uh, uh, to be filled with the Spirit of God. He doesn't want it just to be on the inside. He wants you and I to be submerged. Yes. He wants you and I to be engulfed. Oh, he wants you and I to be surrounded, yeah. okay, yeah. totally uh, consumed by the Spirit of Almighty God, and we can be. John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will I at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? That's what they were thinking about. But Jesus showed them what they needed to focus on. He said, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Woo. Remember when we recently talked about what Peter said in chapter 2? Okay? And he said, This promise is for you, your children, okay? And all. Huh? To, for you, your children, and for as many as the Lord our God shall, all that are afar off, and as many as the Lord our God shall call. It is for every believer. So we go on. We're in chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. It wasn't just the 12. As he mentioned, it was 120 there. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now what time, what, what, what uh, feast is going on here? It's the Feast of the Pentecost. People came from all over the world for this feast to Jerusalem. People from different places People of different languages. Okay? Look, look what happened. Okay? People of different languages. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because those people that were from all over the world, okay, were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. These disciples who predominantly were from Galilee, okay, who were gathered there in the upper room, who got filled with the Holy Ghost, came out, and they began to speak in other tongues. And these other people from all over different parts, from different nations, with different languages, heard them glorifying God and praising God in their own native tongue from wherever they were from. Amen. What a wonderful thing. Amen. God broke that language barrier and had the gospel preached to these people. Amen. Okay? He had the gospel preached to these people. Now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because every man heard him speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marvel, saying one, do another behold or not. All these would speak Galileans, which we just shared with you. And how few we every man in his own tongue, wherein we were born. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, dwellers in Mesopotamia, and Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya, Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. It wasn't that God changed their hearing. It's right. that God caused those that were filled with the Holy Ghost to speak in, a, in another tongue. Amen. And God still does that today. Amen. 
You understand where we're coming from tonight? Yeah, yes. Sir. Okay? It, the miracle was that the fact that those disciples were speaking in languages that were not their original languages. Okay? They were not their original, original languages, but God gave them the ability to speak all of these foreign languages. There were 140 of them. Different ones were speaking different languages so that these people, look at verse 11, Creeds, Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongue the wonderful works of God. Hey, these people who are from Galilee are speaking in our language. And they're telling us the wonderful works of God. Okay? And brother and sister, God still does that. Man, I've yes. seen it. My wife testifies. I, I believe that, that someone was, she was praying in the Holy Ghost. Was it you? And somebody came up and said, you're speaking in my language. And she doesn't know that language. I know a man, he was trying to learn Spanish. He had that Rosetta Stone. <laughs> this guy couldn't roll an R if his life depended on it. <laughs> Pero. <laughs> Instead of Pero? Y'all don't even do it good. Okay? He couldn't roll an R if his life depended on it. God filled that man with the Holy Ghost. And I heard him pray in tongues. And he was rolling R's. Man, I tell you what, my Spanish teacher would have been proud of him. <laughs> what he couldn't do in his own natural ability, God gave him the ability to do. Amen. What these people couldn't do. They couldn't witness, witness to these people right. uh, in their own natural tongue. They wouldn't have understood them. But God gave them the ability to do it. Just like God gives you and I the ability, brother and sister, the power to be a witness for Almighty God. Amen. He gives us the ability, brother and sister. Man, you're looking at the guy. I was so, uh, I had such an inferiority complex. I didn't want to talk to people. I remember I was there, and I came back from, from Iraq and Saudi Arabia, and uh, this, this, they were talking about going soul winning. I didn't even know what that was. They are going to go out and invite people to church. And I think it was a, I think we used to go on Tuesday, if I remember correctly. I don't know. One of the days. Anyway, it was raining that day. And I said, well, there's, there's my out. It's raining. Surely they're not going to go. So I didn't go. Okay, I hadn't moved into servicemen's home yet. I was sitting at the barracks. I think it was Tuesday. I think the first time I was in church was on Sunday. Monday I went to dinner. Tuesday I skipped out on soul winning. Okay? And uh, I saw him the next service. I said, y'all didn't go, did you? No, yeah, we went. We had umbrellas. We went and invited people to church. And I felt like a dog. The Holy Ghost slapped me upside the head. And I hadn't been filled with the Holy Ghost yet. Okay? That was coming on Friday. Man, what a week. Okay? Oh, yeah. That was coming on Friday. I felt so bad. They're going to do it again on Saturday. They had a prayer meeting, a Bible study, and a prayer meeting on Friday night. And I, I, was, in that, I was in that prayer meeting. And people were praying in the Holy Ghost. And I, I didn't know anything too much about that. But I knew that I wanted the Holy Ghost. And I simply said, God... You said I could have the Holy Ghost. Yes. I want the Holy Ghost. I sat in that little folding chair and began to pray in tongues yes. as the Spirit of God gave me yes. utterance. Yes. And guess what I did on Saturday? I went out huh, and I began to be a witness for the Lord. Now, I was still kind of nervous and still kind of kind of had my little inferiority complex. We all have to grow in the grace of the knowledge of the Lord. Amen. But they put me with this guy. He could talk you into buying sand in Arizona. <laughs> Yes, oh, he was persuasive. A young man named Victor, talk a mile a minute. And, uh, and I'm, I'm with him. And he's just inviting people left and right. And he's all smooth and, and everything. And he said, he said, now you try it. And I'm, and I'm all nervous and everything. And I said, you know what? I got, I'm going to do what God wants me to do. And I began to invite people to church. And you know what, brother and sister? God gave me boldness, just like he yes. said in the word of God. And I started bringing people to church. Amen. God started using me, just like other people, to reach out to people. He gave me the power to overcome. He gave me the power to have boldness. He does it for each and every one of us. Okay? If we will receive what God has for us. Brother and sister, there's no depth. There's no height. We can overcome. Brother and sister, we can absolutely be victorious. Let's go on just a little bit. We go on. And we go on here in chapter 2, and he tells them, as we read to you, as we shared with you, Peter said unto them, they wanted to know what they needed to do to be saved. Repent. That's when the salvation comes. Be, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
for the remission of sins or to show that your sins have been remitted and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you, your children, all that are fall, even as to many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Man, we live in an untoward world. We live in a wicked world, my friend. God has given us power in the midst of this whole wicked world to be a shining light, to be an example, to be different. And we can do it. Amen? God has delivered us, brother and sister, just like he delivered them in the Old Testament. It says so many times, he, he reiterated, I delivered you with a mighty hand. He just barely delivered us. But brother, since he saved us to the utmost, he's filled us to his spirit, with his spirit. Brother, sister, he is working in us. He is preparing us. He is using us. Oh, thank God. Brother, sister, we can be used of the Lord. You know, we try to help people. I talked to a man, I think it was yesterday, and talked to him, and I, I wish he would have come to church. He didn't. That's his, that's his choice, whatever the case may be. We'll continue to, to pray for him. Okay, and uh, he began to tell me that, you know, I, I, this one told me they were going to talk to me, and they didn't, they didn't talk to me. And this other one, they're supposed to be a Christian, they said they were going to help me, and they never talked to me. And I said, well, you know what, I'm talking to you. We can, we want, we're here, we want to help you. God wants to help you. You don't have to be defeated. You don't have to be confused. You don't have to be messed up in your mind. Uh, sin is not greater than God. The devil is not greater than God. Come on, church. We are more than conquerors. We can do it. Huh? God in you, brother and sister, is the hope of glory. Not only for yourself, but for the rest of this world. It is the hope, brother and sister, that we have. This man, uh, you know, he, he I, I tried to help him, whatever the case may be. We're still trying to help him if he wants help. But I don't want to just talk on the phone. People need to come to church. People need to come and let God deal with their hearts. Yes. Amen. Yes. They need to repent of their sin. Yes. Amen. Are you here? I'm not a psychologist. We don't have some couch for you to lay on. Ah. <laughs> oh, boy. That's too short right there. <laughs> yes, it is. That's not, what, that's not what most people need. I don't understand there's people that have issues, and we're not against those that help. You know what most people need? They just need to get saved. Yes. Yes. They need to gotta straighten your mind out. Gotta yes. absolutely give you a right mind and a right thinking, brother and sister. Thank God for that. He can do it for each and every one. Okay. Well, there's so many people. I, I heard somebody recently testify. You know, I was all on all these these psychotropic drugs. Is that right? <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> oh, that's not the word. But I'm, I don't know what they are, but they're drugs. Psychedelic. Dope. Psychedelic. That really makes you think messed up. <laughs> anyway. They were on all these pills, and, and uh, they didn't want to take the pills anymore. And God didn't want them to take the pills anymore because God's helping them to think right. Amen? Amen. God helps us all, brother and sister. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. Brother and sister, he has caused you and I, if we will receive it, if we will walk in it, if we will live in it, brother and sister, that no height, no height nor depth is able to stop us. You know the old, you know the old song? The old uh, 60 song, ain't no mountain high enough. Yes. Ain't no value enough to keep me from loving you. You know what, brother says, ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough to keep me from loving God. Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, to make me love God more. Yes. Hallelujah. Man, look at the valley the Lord brought me out of. Amen. Look at the mountaintop Jesus set me on. Well, I'm going to another valley where you're going to go through it. I like what this psalmist said. He said, no, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm not going to stay in it. I'm going to walk through it. Amen. Huh? Yes. Why? Thou art with me. Yes, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Yes. Hallelujah. He is with us, brother and sister. We are walking with him. We can receive what he has for us if we have it. We need to. If we have, it's not a one-time thing. If it's been a while since we prayed and the Holy Ghost 
Brother and sister, let's this night make it up in our mind. I'm going to pray through. I'm going to break through and get my blessing. I know what the Holy Ghost can do. Oh, hallelujah. I've been in that place where my mind was full of cobwebs and I was all confused and, and things were seemingly come against me. And I just began to pray and began to pray and I began to pray in the Holy Ghost and God cleared it all up and God absolutely brought victory back to my life. God can do more in a moment of time than we can, brother and sister, in all of our words and all of our preaching. We're, uh, you know, when he tells me to stop, I'm going to shut up and sit down, and we're going to come and pray. I'm probably going to kneel down, but we're going to come and pray. But let's pray in faith, amen? Let's pray, oh, let the Holy Ghost pray through you tonight. Let God build up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, let the love of God be shed abroad in your heart. And when the devil comes along, then he tries to have all these little itty bitty piddly problems between people. Things that don't even matter, brother and sister. All misunderstandings and hard feelings and all the lies of the enemy. Thank God we can pray in the Holy Ghost. And that love of God, brother and sister, can be shed abroad in our hearts by the Spirit of Almighty God. It can be shed abroad in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Brother Sister, we can have that, that most holy faith. We can have that love of God. Thank God. That love of God covers a multitude of sin. Well, I think this, this, this one did me wrong and the other did me wrong. You know what? Jesus did me right. I'm going to love them. I'm going to be gracious to them. I'm going to be merciful to them the way that God has been to me. Amen. So what? Somebody cursed at me and slammed the door in my face. I did the same thing to the man who helped win me to God. I didn't slam the door in his face, but I definitely cursed him out. Okay? You reap what you sow. It may take 35, 40 years before you reap it, but sometimes it comes back on you. But you know what? We can pray for people. We can keep our heart right. Hallelujah. Oh, we can be like Jesus. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Hallelujah. Most people don't even know what they're doing. They don't even know why they're miserable. They're just miserable. They don't even know why. Brothers and sisters, but thank God. We don't, we don't have to be that way, and they don't have to be that way. We can show them the love of God. We can continue to reach out to people. Sure, there'll be those that reject and those that, that won't keep their word and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? Thank God for those who will receive and those, brother and sister, who will let God change their life. God who will take them, maybe they're in a very low place in their life, and he will elevate them. And they humble themselves under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt them in due time. He will exalt them, brother and sister. He gave his son for you and I, as we were sharing this morning, while we were sinners, to meet all of our needs, brother and sister, now we are his children. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword, as it is written? For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. They all these things. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor light, nor angels, nor principalities. You know what that is? That's spiritual uh, realms, brother and sister. Spiritual principalities. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. We are not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're fighting against spiritual wickedness in high places. And the word of God tells me it shall not separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Can't do it. Okay? I don't have to allow it, and it doesn't, it doesn't have to happen, brother and sister. Thank God. Listen to what the psalmist said. Okay, we're in Psalm 62, and verse 5. Man, you're feeling down, go read some encouraging psalms. They're psalms that will help you. Okay, go and read. Brothers and sisters, we're going to read here. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. When people are coming against me, well, let me tell you who is your justifier. Let me tell you who the one is. That is your defense. Are you here? Let me tell you who the one is, brother and sister, that will plead your cause. 
He intercedes for you and I. Amen. His name is Jesus. Amen. He knows everything. He has all power. He is everywhere, brother and sister. Regardless of where you are, he's there with you. Amen. Amen. He is there with you and I. He is our defense. And I shall not be moved. And my God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Hallelujah. You know, we got a strong tower, brother and sister, that we can run into. Hallelujah. And be saved. Did he tell us? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, that's more than initial salvation. That's every day of your life. You need help. All you got to do is call upon the name of the Lord. He will hear your cry. He will answer your prayer. He will come on the scene. He will move on your behalf. He will deliver you. He will save you. Amen. Amen. There's only one thing, brother and sister, that separates us from God. And we don't have to be this way. We don't want to have a lack of faith in our life. We don't want to allow sin. Brother and sister, if we will continue in the faith, if we will continue allowing Jesus to be the Lord of our life, we already have a promise, and we're learning about it in our Bible study. He's already gone. The place for you has already been prepared. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's going to get us there. Amen. Oh, praise God. Yes. Praise God. You know, I, I saw something the other day. You see things online. It's kind of funny. It's an old Beatles song. Because I got a ticket to ride. Well, they actually saw Paul McCartney on the train. Somebody took his picture and put it on the bottom of it. It's a train in London. Just a normal train. I got a ticket to ride. <laughs> well, he's doing more than singing about it. He's living in it. He's riding a train. Well, you know what, brother and sister? I got a ticket to ride yeah, with yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Make a meme. Show us getting yeah, raptured. Yeah, oh, yeah. Have my picture in there. Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. We're on our way. Yeah. It's going to happen one of these days. But until it does, let's be faithful to the Lord. Yeah. Neither height nor depth. It's going to separate you from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Tonight as we bow our heads and we close our eyes in reverence to the Lord. Come on, glory's going to come. Come and see. And we're going to come and pray. We haven't prayed in the Holy Ghost. Maybe it's been a while. Pray in the Holy Ghost tonight. Don't wait on a feeling. Don't wait on a sensation. Open your mouth and let that Spirit of God begin to pray through you. Praise you tonight, Jesus. We love you. We thank you. Oh, let us pray. Let us seek the Lord tonight.